Welcome, Mama and Papa Bears, to another Mama Bear Apologetics podcast. This podcast is to help you raise kiddos to stand firm against the secular tide and be warriors in the faith. Now, this whole past year, and I'm talking 2022, 2023, we have had some amazing podcasts dedicated to helping you disciple your kiddos, because that is what we're called to do. We are called to raise our kiddos in training and instruction of the Lord and put that training into practical use. And there's nothing more practical today than helping, especially our teens, navigate the faith well so that they know how to field questions that they might have coming in them from their friend group or what they're seeing on social media, as well as to properly witness to to their friends. So with me today, I'm really excited. I have Dr. Jeff Myers. Now, Dr. Jeff Myers is head of Summit Ministries, and this ministry is just one after my own heart. It ministers to teens and young people ages 16 to 22 with an intensive summer experience. I don't even want to call it camp. It is like, it is almost like a massive intensive that is fantastic in helping them feel challenges to the faith to be able to grow and witness. So Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today on Mama Bear Apologetics. Amy, thank you. I, I'm looking forward to our conversation at, I just love Mama Bear Apologetics. I'm so grateful for all the Mama Bears and Papa Bears who care that their children grow up strong in their faith and have confidence in what they believe. Absolutely. And one thing I'm so thankful for is we we do conferences. And one thing I'm always asked by parents is, okay, what can I do next? Perhaps they have just been acquainted with how secular culture is actively evangelizing their kiddos and they want to raise them to stand firm in the faith. And they have teens in their house who are saying, yes, they've dedicated their lives to Christ, but how can I make them more effective for the kingdom or help them to really understand why they believe what they believe? And that's where some ministry comes in is here is this fantastic resource to help build up teens. So Jeff, I would love to just know more of the history of how some ministries came to be, how you got this vision to reach out specifically to this age group and, uh, and, and how it, it's now in two different places as well as online as well. So please tell us a little bit about Summit Ministries. Yeah, we, well, at Summit, we have the privilege of reaching tens of thousands of young people plus adults every year to equip them to embrace God's truth and to champion a biblical worldview the program was started by Dr. David Noble in 1962 in this little hippie town called Manitou Springs, Colorado, at an antique hotel right at the foot of Pikes Peak. Wow. Uh, but but my story intersects with it as well. You, you know, you mentioned how many young adults are sort of tempted by wa uh, walking away from their faith. And it's a, it's a terrible conflict for both parents and teens. It's a conflict for teens because they, they're thinking, what if my parents were wrong? and all the things that they told me. Mm -hmm. And it's a parent, it's a conflict for parents because they're thinking, I raised my child, I sent them to camp, I they went to Sunday school, we had devotionals together, and yet they're walking away. Just, um, just three days ago, I was visiting with a mother who was just distraught because the Lord had blessed her with seven children. And, and when they grew up, five of them, of the seven, walked away from their faith. Mm -hmm. And that's about where the statistics are. It's about 70% of young adults who are significantly involved in church in their high school years are no longer even attending church by the time they reach their mid twenties. And I understand that because I was almost that statistic. Yeah. I grew up in Detroit, Michigan. It was a terrible place to grow up. I, I was offered hard drugs for the first time at seven years of age. I remember cowering under my bed, the sound of a gunshot on the streets. And my parents we're from Kansas and Oklahoma, so they decided when I was about 10 that we would move away from the city back out to the mid Midwest. And it was culture shock, to be frank. Uh, we were part of a little church out in Kansas, which was wonderful, wonderful church, but not much programming for young people and not really many answers for the kinds of questions that I was asking. Yeah. So I decided that very quietly, when I graduated from high school, wouldn't make a big fuss, wouldn't confront anybody. I wasn't angry about it. I would just, when I graduated high school, graduate from church. Mm. Well, my parents knew this conflict was going on in my heart. So they arranged for me to attend one of these Summit Ministries programs in Manitou Springs, Colorado. So I, I got there. They said, they, they'll, they'll help you with your questions. So I met the director, Dr. David Noble, the founder. And I said, I hope you have a lot of answers because I have a lot of questions. And I, I was awful awesome. of 17, but I was yeah. so, 
I was arrogant, I guess, yeah. but I was desperate. Mm-hmm. And, and he said, he, he, what he could have said to me was, don't worry, kid, we're smart. We got all the answers. Yeah. Instead, he said, at Summit, we aren't afraid of questions. And I knew immediately, Amy, I had found my tribe because I, I, I knew answers are hard to come by. They are. I mean, that's why you have the Mama Bear Apologetics books dealing with different things. But these challenges are real. I knew they were hard, but I wanted to know somebody out there was looking for answers and that from a biblical perspective, there were answers. I would say that event, I ultimately, through coming to that two-week event, the Lord uh, led me into a personal relationship with him. But it was a trajectory change. And so now, as president of that same ministry, I have the privilege of working with uh, tens of thousands of young people, but the probably the part closest to my heart is the 2,000 young people or so that I get to work with every summer in these two-week intensives that changed my life and have been so influential in so many lives since. So that's a little bit of the story. Oh my gosh, that is that is incredible. Um, there's so much that you said that it, it just, it does, it breaks your heart because so many, and, and Pew Research has done studies on this, on why millennials, younger millennials and Gen Z are walking away from the faith. And so many of the reasons they gave were intellectual. They were unanswered doubts. And doubts are not a problem for God, but to a, a teen or a young believer, unanswered doubts can really shake a person's faith and cause them to walk away. And I love the approach of when you, you approached him and said, I hope you've got answers. He said, you know what? We're not afraid of questions because in a way that that takes away sometimes that that Christian arrogance that sometimes it, especially like 90s, early 2000s is, oh, I've got it all put together. And instead it sounds like it, he offered you, no, 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 I'm a sojourner with you in the faith. I'm going to come and walk alongside you. I'm not the destination. I'm somebody to walk with you as we pursue this. And that is so comforting to a young person to say, wait a second, I got basically a partner that can walk alongside me that isn't going to be shocked by anything I ask or belittle, or just, you know, give me a passive, oh, just have faith sort of answer. That was so common. Instead, it's, you know what? Your questions are good. It means you're thinking well. And guess what? We've got a God who is not intimidated by any questions, and he's got resources out there. And that is just, that is so encouraging because that's the living water that we want our teens to see. And another thing that you mentioned that I think is so fantastic is community. Because Satan, one of the ways he's so effective is making us feel isolated and alone. And so many teens, they have that that isolated feeling, especially now with Gen Z, they're exposed to the world through social media. So they can feel even more insignificant than before, because now their community isn't just their friends or the classmates, it's the world. And yet here's a community of like-minded teens who are wrestling in the faith that they can come alongside for two solid weeks. I mean, that is just absolutely incredible. So I, I loved your story. And I'm just so thankful that, that you guys are, are carrying on this tradition since the 60s. I had no idea it was around that long. Well, it's a, it's a great story because, it, you know, in the early 1960s, what people were afraid of was communism. You know, the nuclear threat, yeah. the advance of the Soviet Union. And at the time, David Noble had been a college student he had heard a lecture about the Marxist worldview. And just to show you how much of a nerd he he was, he decided to read the collected works of Marx and Lenin, like, you know, nice. massive yeah. volumes of of Marx and Lenin. And as he was reading, he, he saw that, that Lenin was saying, okay, uh, here's how we're going to take over the world. It might not be through um, bloody revolution, but we're going to take over the seminaries. Yeah. And we're going to convince people that our theology is better, that there really is no God. Then we're going to take over the philosophy departments, the sociology departments, the economics departments, the history yeah. departments, right down the line. And he, reali- and he realized, wow, they have a really intentional worldview. Yeah. Does Christianity have an intentional worldview? Do we realize what we're up against? Mm-hmm. That the enemies of Jesus, the ones who want his word torn down and uh, canceled— do, do we know what we would say in response to these questions? And that's ultimately how Summit Ministries got started. Very quirky, but tens of thousands of young people have come through this program since that time. 
we think it's close to 100,000 students who've come through the two-week program. Now, there are lots of others who've gone through our other programs, but in that particular setting, it just seemed that this two, something about these two weeks bringing students together with top Christian thought leaders who are best-selling authors who've been in the arena, okay? Yeah. They've debated atheists. They have been there. And, and then they can walk alongside. But really, it's, it's the way of Jesus, you know, when, when, when Jesus, when the, some of the John's disciples came to Jesus and said, Hey, where are you staying? And he said, come and see. That was the message. Come and see. Yeah. Come along with me. Uh, and, and it's really cool to know that you're journeying with people who are super smart, like Dr. Dr. David Noble. I realized after I met him, this guy not only had read the collected works of Marx and Lenin as a college student, but he literally read a book a day on all kinds of different subjects, everything from astronomy and the nature of the red ship and the Hubble telescope, all the way to different aspects of psychology. He was the most widely read person I had ever met. And I, I realized it's not just that he has learned and now he's going to teach me. It's that he is a continual learner and he's drawing me into that desire as well. And then helping guide me to resources and answers that will give me confidence in my faith. No, and that that is vital. When I was going through seminary, there was a, a story that my seminary professor had had told that he would walk by his professor's window and he would always see him in front of a book. And he asked him, you know, okay, every day, you know, you're teaching all day. And then I, I walk past your your home and I see you reading each day. Why do you do that? And he goes, because I want my students to drink from a running river than a stagnant pond. And that's what's so refreshing is yeah. this his lifelong learning is he's always refilling and refilling. And that's that running water that is just, it, it's, it's nurturing all around him. So he sounds like an amazing person yeah. to, to hang out with. That's so yeah. incredible. Uh, I love that word picture of, of living water in Hebrew. That's mayim kaim. It's, yeah. it, it is a, it, it's different than a stagnant pool of water. Mm -hmm. It's not just sitting water. It's water that's constantly refreshed. And that's what Jesus gives us. So, Introducing students into that kind of community, you can only imagine how, especially if they're coming with big questions, Yeah, how refreshing and how comforting that is, but how energizing it is at the same time to realize yeah. you're not just giving me answers so that I don't walk away from my faith. You're inviting me into a whole different life, a much bigger worldview than the one I was living with before, a worldview that encompasses everything and shows me how to be a blessing to the nations of the earth. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm, I'm asking this question, but we have already hinted at it is, you know, what makes Summit different from other Christian camps and conferences? And, uh, you know, we, we've touched on it a little bit, but it's, it's worldview focus. That is what makes Summit unique. Can you tell us more about this worldview focus and just how it's, how broad and, and what the goal is there? Yeah, well, you, you've, you've nailed it. That's exactly the difference. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the difference and then I'll tell you why it makes a difference. But yeah. the, the difference is at Summit Ministries, we help students understand that a biblical Christian faith is actually a worldview. It's a way of seeing everything in the faith, but it's also a way of seeing everything else. Uh, just a quick example. You remember when the uh, reading long, long ago, the Rosetta Stone, stone was discovered. Yes. And uh, over time, people had completely forgotten. Nobody knew how to read Egyptian hieroglyphics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then all of a sudden they saw the hieroglyphics next to uh, an ancient form of Greek as well as another a, a language from the era. Well, people knew how to read the ancient Greek. So then they could interpret the words in the hieroglyphics. Yeah. But it didn't just help them understand the words in the hieroglyphics. Understanding how to read the hieroglyphics helped them understand all the other hieroglyphics that up until that point in time had been obscure to them. No one could mm -hmm. figure out what they meant. It opened up a whole new avenue into studying Egyptian culture. Mm -hmm. But it's the same way. We don't just read scripture for our own personal nourishment. Nourishment. We read scripture because by understanding it, it helps us understand everything else. Yeah. You know, C.S. Lewis said, I believe in Christianity is I believe that the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. Yes. So we help students understand there's a biblical worldview and here's the secret sauce. You also help them understand the counterfeit worldviews that are up against the biblical worldview. So years ago, I was uh, traveling in another city in another country, 
And a guy came up to me and said, hey, do you want to buy a real fake Rolex? A <laughs> real fake <laughs> Rolex. Rover, thinking, is it, is it? Is it a real fake or is it real fake? You know, but it was funny to me because I was jet lagged to him. Yeah. It didn't, but, but, but if you think about it, a, a, a counterfeit that looks more like the real thing is actually more fake, isn't it? Yeah. So you, you want to look at these other worldviews and not just say, can you believe people believe that? They're a bunch, what a bunch of morons. Yeah. You want to look at it and say, can you understand how if you believed that you had been oppressed or that other people around the world are being oppressed, that you might be drawn to a Marxist worldview yeah. that says we can solve the problem of oppression. Mm -hmm. You have to not only look at what worldviews do to sort of introduce themselves to you, you have to actually look at the consequences of those ideas through time. Yeah. So we help the students understand these worldviews, we take them seriously, and then we help them respond to those worldviews. Mm -hmm. So what's the big difference? Well, when you go to a, most camps, uh, you you feel, uh, I think people can relate to this, you feel, and it's a Holy Spirit moment where you feel yeah. very strongly that your life was not going in the right direction and you want it to go in a different direction. And, and the moment is maybe overpowering. A lot of people are in tears when they come to that moment. But, you know, feelings are kind of thinking that fades in and out of our consciousness. Uh, so after a few days, you might say, man, I can't remember why, but I was really upset during that, or I can't, I'm a little embarrassed at how emotional I was, but the, the feelings can fade. But if you go to a program that helps you see everything differently, mm -hmm. then everything actually reinforces what you have learned. Yeah. You see a news item and you think, ah, I know the worldview behind that assumption, or your professor says something in class and you think, I can't believe this. They told me about this worldview at Summit. Now I understand why the professor says what the professor says. Yeah. So all of your life experiences then become teaching moments that reinforce the truth of a biblical worldview. Mm. So the effect is huge on the lives yeah. of these students. Uh, I'll just give you, I mean, statistics don't always tell the whole story. Sometimes they don't do a very good job telling any of the story, but just for <laughs> illustration, about 4% of Gen Z has a biblical worldview in this country. Yeah. That's what we're finding, about 4%. Mm -hmm. By the time the students leave Summit, 85% have a biblical worldview. Okay, so we study them. In fact, George Barn is one of the researchers who helps us study our student students during the two weeks. But here's something else. We hired a research company called Gray Matter to study our students one year out, five years out, 10 years out from the program. And they found that by the time they get to 10 years, about, I think it was 89% of them have a biblical worldview. Yeah. How, how's that possible? How is it possible that 10 years out from a two-week experience, that the impact could still remain that strong? And the answer is because they've learned to see everything differently. They've become a new kind of learner um, who gathers in great information, good ideas, trusted sources, but uses them to understand the whole world, not just their own feelings. Absolutely. It reminds me so much of, of a scene uh, from a movie called uh, The Mummy. And there was one scene where they are, they're in this room and it's, it's dark and they just got this one little bit uh, of light. And so she goes and, and lights this torch and shifts a mirror to reflect the light. And she goes, and let there be light. And the mirror bounces off these other mirrors. And all of a sudden the room is illuminated. And that's what a worldview perspective I think does is it not only explodes, okay, why I believe, but now you have this light of all of these other competing worldviews. You can now discern truth from falsehood. And I've seen this, uh, in, in my own, just working with teens, we, I teach from, um, sex is an expression of a worldview. And I've done this multiple times to where the teens come. There's one girl that came afterwards. She goes, Oh my gosh. God is so amazing. He loves us so much. Look at how his design with our bodies and how we communicate with each other expresses not only spiritual truths, but also reinforces God's design for marriage, family. Yeah. And I had another girl who afterwards, she was 17. She had no idea she had value. She had been living a very secular sexual ethic, um, completely downtrodden with depression and anxiety. And yet when she heard the gospel and saw the counterfeit, of sex positivity, she goes, oh my gosh, that was me. 
I had, she had heard everything that she didn't have value, that her body was just an object. She got all of those worldview claims and she heard them without being able to put a name to them. And it wasn't until she heard the gospel that she realized, wait, I, this is why I have value. This is why my body matters. And that's what's so amazing. Mm. When we have this worldview approach, it is, it is not just, you know, feeding. It is also teaching how to fish as well as equipping to teach others. And it, it's amazing. I, yeah. I love that perspective. So I've got to ask. Well, those were great stories. It, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's no, I just was going to say those are great stories. Uh, yeah, it, it's so much fun to see young adults come together in, in this context, bring their questions, learn. Yeah. Uh, but what you, what you're sharing it is it reminded me of our core, core teaching, teaching to our staff mm -hmm. that the DNA of influence is two strands. It's truth mm -hmm. and it's relationship. Yes. They intertwine with one another and they connect. So the goal is to find connecting points between truth and relationship for people every day. Mm. And then it, it's, it, it is only in a biblical worldview this happens Yeah, absolutely. because you have all these views of truth. You know, you have your truth. I have my truth. You know, the ancient Greeks would have said, well, there is objective truth, but it's not, you know, it's sort of out there as yeah. a form and yeah. it, it's a fact or we can express it through logical propositions. Other people said, well, let's express it through mathematical formulas. Mm -hmm. God said, I'm going to express it personally through Jesus. The truth okay. exists. And it's not just a set of facts. It's a person mm -hmm. that changes everything. Yeah, absolutely. Now, one thing, sometimes it can, there's a vulnerability that comes with asking questions. And sometimes teens can be hesitant to ask a question because of how it might feel. So I'm curious, how does Summit sort of nurture this safe doubting atmosphere to where, you know, you can come in whatever stage of faith you're at, you can come in and ask these questions. How has that cultivated this sort of safe doubting atmosphere? And how have you seen flourishing occur within this setting? Well, you, you, the, the word safe is the right word. A lot of people misuse that. They talk about safe spaces on campus, right. which means they want students to have a place where they are safe from thinking. Mm -hmm. We want to have a place where students are safe to think. Yes. So a couple of things happen. First, when, when someone asks a question, we affirm the value of the question and their value. Mm -hmm. Second, we try to ask other questions. Tell me why that's important and what you're thinking. And, and then in giving the answers, to be able to say, uh, you know, here's a, maybe a way that you could approach that and understand that. You, in other words, you lead it in the dialogue. Yeah. Uh, years ago, a friend of mine and I had breakfast and he said, he just blurted out. He said, did you know that Jesus asked 288 questions in the Gospels? And I said, you're telling me that you counted them. You counted, he you sat there for a weekend the and number counted. of questions. <laughs> it's, he said, yeah, I counted them. Well, it set me on a different course because I realized the power of using questions as a teaching tool. So uh, very often, for example, one of the questions students will come with is, how could a good God allow pain? Yes. And I, I wanted to help them deal with that from uh, the standpoint of biblical truth. But I, I need to sort of understand where the question is coming from. So very often I'll ask a question like, uh, wow, super important question. And you know what? I've got that question too. And I want to, I want to, I want you to know you're right on target asking that question. And I'm curious as we talk about how we might find an answer, tell me what's behind the question for you. Is there a story? Is there something that was an experience for you that maybe started you asking that question? And if the student is willing to see that I'm a safe person to talk to, that I'm not going to start preaching at them. Uh, of course, you know, we got a huge library of books. We want to send students home with books because yeah. leaders are readers. Yeah. But if you, if you come in and say, well, you know, I wrote three 500 page textbooks on this, which I did, <laughs> you know, but you know, here's the yeah. answer. Merry Christmas. They're not going to feel safe. Yeah. Right. What they want to know is, is my question legitimate? Am I disappointing God by asking this question? Yeah. Am I, uh, is it possible to find an answer that satisf satisfies me both emotionally and intellectually? Mm -hmm. And then are the people I'm walking with the kind of people that I can trust? All of those questions are happening inside of that one question. Yeah. 
And, and parents can answer it. Parents can answer. I mean, you, this is why you do the ministry that you do. When your kids come to you and say, what about this or what about that? You can look up answers and, and find them. But there are times, especially when a young person is in this 16 to 22 age range, where they are wanting to know who also says so yes. besides my parents. And if you, if the answer to their, if your answer to their question is just, well, so-and-so, uh, youth pastor or so-and-so, you know, it, it, and they don't, they look at that person and say, I don't think they really know a lot more than I do. Then they'll, they'll, they may actually conclude, um, not very many other people believe this besides my parents. Yeah. But when you come to summit and you, and you see this person standing up in front of me is an author of 15 books and has a PhD, and is also kind and nice to talk to and not offended by any of my questions and really helps broaden my perspective so I can see um, the much bigger aspect of a biblical worldview than I saw before, that sticks. That impression yeah. remains for a long, long time. Yeah. No, and I, I love that because it's so counterculture to what we see today in politics and social justice. It's, you cannot question. You just have to shut your mouth and follow. But yet when we affirm the questions and the hurt and ask and get to know the person more, what we're also doing is, aff is affirming the person's dignity as well as reaffirming God's role as loving father. And that's what's so amazing is you're, you're surrounding, teens are being surrounded by other people that they can look up to. This isn't just mom and dad talking or grandma talking. No, these are other uh, individuals who are maybe five, 10 years older than me, 40 years older than me. They have all this life experience, all these different backgrounds. And yet my questions are valid and they are good and they are worthy of an answer and respect. Um, th that's phenomenal because that yeah. breaks down yeah. barriers as well as, um, as, as well as shows the individual that, that God loves your questions and God made you to think well, and we can worship God with our minds. And here's a great place, not only where you can find adults, but also teens who are going through the same thing you are, which, um, it, it, it just, it is fantastic because I'm thinking, gosh, so many teens I've heard, um, some of their complaints uh, with some youth ministry aspects is, oh, you know, it's all about uh, entertainment and I'm just bored by it to where here within Summit, you are intentional about nurturing community, not just with adults, but also with fellow students. Uh, how have you seen that been impactful yeah. of just getting students of similar ages together who are wrestling with the same questions? Well, it, it is uh, the number one fear according to Chapman University of the rising generation that they might be alone. That's yeah. the number one fear being alone. So when you, when you show up to a place and there are 200, 300 other students, you look around and think these are cool people actually. And they're like me. They also have a lot of questions and they're finding answers and they're willing to look for the answers and they're committed to the Lord. It has this huge impression on you. It, the, you, you think, I, and, you know, you go off to a university and you think, man, my professor's really, you know, an atheist or cynical or whatever. Maybe not mean, but just, you know, against the Lord. And and it's really helpful to think, you know, when I was at Summit, there were a lot of other students like me. I'd be curious to know what they would say in this class. Oh, well, they're my friends now, so I can reach out to them. Oh, you know, my professor at Summit. Uh, you know, Dr. J.P. Moreland, and mm -hmm. he is one of the top 10 philosophers in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And he disagrees with my professor. So I don't have to automatically believe what my professor says. There's something about that community that even when you're not in it at that moment, yeah. you bring it with you. And then, of course, you know, at Summit, we really do a lot of follow up things with our students as well. So they have other resources and books and videos they can look at or somebody to reach out to if they have questions. All of those kinds of things really help reinforce that sense of community. There's <laughs> there's so much power in it. I, I got to tell you, though, I mean, we work hard and we play hard at Summit. Oh, yeah. So we are in class. Then we, then we have open forums, which are, we just call them, they're a Q and A, but we call them open forum. So the speaker will sit down in a rocking chair and the, the students gather around and they can ask any question they want. That is fantastic. Any question on any topic, they realize 
boy, these professors are pretty bold if they're willing to take any random question from any random teenager. Yeah. Uh, this, they must take this very seriously. Then we have small group meetings and then we have one-on-one -on -one meetings with mentors. So all of that from the classroom time to the very personal time fits in with just, you know, being in Colorado or in Lookout Mountain, Georgia. Those are our two locations. Both are yeah. great outdoor spots. So we rock climb and rappel and do zip lines and whitewater raft and play sports and do all these things as just part of developing the community together. Yeah. And I should say, I mean, students go off to all different schools, but we're not talking about only Ivy League students who aced their SAT. Mm -hmm. We're talking about every kind of student you can imagine. Mm -hmm. if, if you've got questions or you're looking for answers or you want to find community or you think maybe you could make a difference in the world, but you need some help with your leadership skills, that's the kind of student we're looking for. Yeah. Oh, that is, that is fantastic. And, and I love your locations too, because being immersed <laughs> in nature is, is, is fantastic for reconnecting with God because nature is some of the offers an amazing testimony to the creator. It's one thing, um, I, one of my favorite authors, uh, Louise May Alcott, she came to faith as a child because in the early morning, she would wake up before dawn and just go running through the woods and watch the sunrise. And it was in watching the sunrise and being immersed in creation that she goes, oh my gosh, God has to exist. So I love not only, you know, the, the intellectual, the ability, to, hey, whatever question that you've had pent up and you just go ahead and sling it on this person. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to hook you up with resources, answers, books, whatever you need. But we're also going to be immersed in the beauty of God's creation because so much of our world, we're Im immersed yeah. in uh, the creation of our own making. It's buildings, billboards, social media, um, the metaverse, you know, video games, all of these things that are that are artificial and of our own hands. But it's when we get in creation and we not yeah. only are worshiping with our mind, but with our senses. Oh my gosh, how powerful that is and impactful that oh, is. That's on so young powerful. People. That's so true. Yeah, oh, that it's so true. Uh, on the other side of the camera, I have a huge window here yeah. and I, I'm looking at Pike National Forest. It's right there. It's, it's on the other side of the parking lot from our building is the access to Pike National Forest. And right over there is Pike's Peak. You know, yeah. so you're in this beautiful setting yeah. where you're, you're with other people. You're finally feeling safe to ask all of your big questions. Mm -hmm. You're finding out your parents weren't crazy. They were on to something. And, and now you can feel more connected to them as well as more connected with the truth and with the Lord mm -hmm. and with new friends. I still, I came to Summit as a high school graduate. That was yeah. a long time ago. You can probably you know, you can see my gray hair <laughs> or what's, what's, uh, what's even left of my gray hair. Uh, but, but I still have friends yeah. from that time. Mm -hmm. I still have friends. Yeah. There's a one friend, uh, she and her husband come out here and help us at Summit Ministries for two weeks every summer. Mm -hmm. I have seen her every single summer of my life since 1983. That is so cool. We still stay connected in these communities. Yeah. Which is so vital because of how social media ha and, and just cell phones have changed the way people communicate to where when teens can have a few clicks away of a solid, biblically grounded Christian community, not only of fellow believers, but of their past professors and everything, that's fantastic because now they are walking with their brothers and sisters in Christ tucked in their pocket to where if they are in a rough situation, oh my gosh, right. somebody, encouragement is just a few clicks away. And, oh, if I've got a question, this, or somebody said this, and it sounds really convincing. Does anybody know where I can get more information on this? It's fantastic because we are shifting ministry to work with culture and to even use culture to the advantage of spreading the kingdom. And that's, that's phenomenal. And it's, it's great when we see ministries who are shifting and helping quit kids to be able to be effective and to have these lasting relationships, which you've seen through these studies, 10 years, what did you say? 89% is still solid biblical foundation. And that's because that foundation was laid. Community was nurtured. They were able to recognize and discern truth and know how to navigate the culture effectively without succumbing to it. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, programs like Summit are not, it's not a magic pill that no, you take. No, no, no. Yeah. I don't want to give a, off that indication. Free will is very real. It's, yeah. It, what, what, what happens, I think that's so powerful is that it changes your trajectory. Yeah. 
Now, if you think of a satellite in space, and let's say you change the trajectory one-tenth of one percent, after several orbits around the Earth, it's in a very different orbit yes. than it was before, even with a minute change. And that's kind of what happens at Summit. Even students who come here as non-believers, some of them leave and they're still non-believers, but they've actually changed in so many ways. Many of them do come to faith ultimately, but they're, they're at very least, I remember one student who came as, and he was the head of his atheist club oh, at his wow. university. Somebody challenged him to come to Summit and he did. Wow. And he went home and all of the little pamphlets and things that he wrote from that point forward were totally different mm -hmm. because he, he said, I've met these really serious Christians who are smart. Yeah. You can no longer say, these, they, they must be idiots to believe what they believe. It just yeah. isn't true. And it was incredible how much he fought on behalf of the Christian students at his university at that point, even though he, at that point, had not yet come to personal faith. Yeah. It, it, it's that kind of a change. Yeah, it breaks down those caricature hurdles that they are, these are not closed-minded jerks. They are, are thoughtful and in, they're intellectually robust and they are gracious and charitable and funny. And that breaking down those caricatures can really make, make waves, which you see in that story there. So I gotta, I gotta ask, cause I have never been familiar with this program, but it's, it, it keeps coming up in the past few years. And this is the idea of the gap year program. So for, for parents out there who may not be familiar with, with the gap year program, can you just briefly describe what that is? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll out, so we'll have about 70,000 students that we influence through our curriculum courses and our okay. programs every year. Uh, we'll, you know, 2000 students will come to a two week impersonal program. Mm -hmm. 36 will come to a year long program, wow. one whole school year from September all the way through May. And in that nine months, they, uh, there are kind of two components to it. The first component is a really deep dive in biblical worldview mm -hmm. and in an immersive environment of lots of writing, dialogue, thinking, a lot of these students are preparing to go off to a university and, but they don't, they haven't really yet developed the thinking and the writing skills they need to prevail yeah. over and against what other students are going to be doing on campus. Mm. It's really hard. And most campuses are pretty close minded, as you mentioned earlier. Yes. And it's the Christians, ironically, who have the opportunity to be the open-minded ones, to ask questions and to learn and grow rather than shut down the conversation. So that we teach them how to do that. And so we have instructors come in for a week at a time. They learn how to properly read and interpret scripture, how to apply their understanding of scripture to the things that are going on in the culture and, and, a lot of the, all of that's in the context of a community and a lodge that we own here in Southwest Colorado that's uh, surrounded on three sides by National Forest. It's amazing. It's an incredible experience. Then in the spring, the students come back to Manitou Springs and stay for the spring semester and work with local businesses and ministries in sort of an internship situation continuing to learn and grow, but also interacting with the community. So how, how does what you understand about a biblical worldview affect the way you work, the way you engage in the world, in an economic world, in the world of commerce, in the world of work, in the world of making a difference, in the world of working alongside other people to accomplish goals? Mm, that's fantastic. Now, for people who can't attend online or can't attend in person, you do offer a similar program online, yes? We do. So during COVID, we developed an online program. Uh, we were super pleased. The, res the results were that the program essentially went global. Wow. So people from 90 different countries were able to participate in it. That online program, you can also get that information at summit.org. But if you've got a 16 to 22 year old, I would, I would say, and I'm a parent of four, I would say I, it's hard to imagine a better investment yeah. and it is an investment. It is. I mean, we have scholarships available for families who are having a tough time and a lot of families are right now, mm. but it's a $2,000 investment for the two weeks. 
Now uh, that includes, that's inclusive of the, all the teaching, the room, the meals, all of that kind of thing. Yeah. But that investment, a lot of parents are going to invest 40, 100, $200,000 in a college education. Yeah. Invest $2,000 at the outset to help your child really develop a strong uh, on-ramp to life. It's sort of a rite of passage too, I think especially for young men, because young men, how do they know whether they're a man? You know, in our culture, well, you know you're a man if you take drugs or do something risky or have sex with a girl. Right. But there aren't in the biblical, uh, in, in Christian circles very often, positive rites of passage. Mm-hmm. Well, coming to Summit and realizing that you can be part of a community of leaders who are mature in response to the immaturity of the culture that surrounds them. And I'm not just talking about the immaturity of other young adults. I'm talking about the immaturity of the way adults interact with one another. Yeah. They can rise above it and, to, and become leaders. That for a lot of young men gives them a significant sense of purpose. Yeah. No, and I love that because it doesn't closet masculinity into gender stereotypes. It says, no, you can be an artist, you can be a songwriter, you can be soft spoken, yeah. or you can be, uh, you know, a, a manly, hardcore Esau type gentleman. But what makes you a man, what makes that, that biblical manhood is, is that patience, that kindness, that thoughtfulness, that standing firm in the truth. That is what manhood is. And it offers so much diversity to men and also gives them that that confidence to stand firm in the faith and to be bold because when they are older and should they have families and children, we need men who are going to stand firm against culture and cultivate the next generation to stand firm in the faith. And the only way they do that is if they have that firm foundation ahead of time of knowing, okay, what is true manliness? What does God's word say? And how can I pour into the next generation? So that's, that's fantastic. I love that aspect. Well, Jeff, you, you mentioned it briefly. It's, it's, yeah, it's really special. I have yeah. two, I have two sons who've come through the program and I've seen that effect on both of them. Uh, and they grew up in my house. So like apologetics and worldviews, we were yeah. always talking about that stuff, but yeah. watching them come through summit and, and, and s- sort of develop that relationship with the community, they've emerged as, as young leaders. In fact, I, one of my young, my, one of my young, my younger student is in college right now, uh, And, and he said, I said, man, I hated group projects when I was in school because my grade depends on somebody else. And he said, well, let me give you a different perspective. This kid's 19. He said, let me give you a different perspective. In a group project, you have the opportunity to help other people achieve their goals while achieving the group goal, which enables you to develop real leadership skills. Oh my God. And I thought, kid, that's it. That's it. That's exactly uh, where I hoped that you would be. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Aren't those moments amazing as a parent? You're like, yes, I had nothing to do with that amazing conclusion. That was all God, but I'm so glad I got to witness it. <laughs> yeah, have, that's right. I, I have love three it. boys myself. And so uh, they're they're not quite old enough for Summit, but um, I'm, I'm really excited for them to get to that point because uh, as, a, as a teen, I walked away from the faith for a time because I had questions and nobody had answers. And to to have a ministry that has this and it nurtures leadership skills and cultivates them within kids is it, just, it's fantastic. And I'm so excited to, to have my kids go and, and experience that myself. So Jeff, you mentioned it briefly of how parents can, can find out more about Summit Ministries, how they can uh, maybe get their kids involved or even listener- you may not have kids yourself. Perhaps you are a, a grandparent or a youth leader or a pastor or whatever. This is a fantastic, worthwhile ministry to to offer up funds to so that you can help a, a child get better grasp the, the foundations of the faith. So maybe if you were listening, you don't have kiddos of yourself. You know what? This is a worthwhile ministry to offer into because it's cultivating the next generation and you can help somebody do that. So Jeff, how, what are, what are some ways that parents can get all the great information on Summit Ministries? Well, uh, just go to our website, summit.org and you'll see two options there, curriculum or conferences, click on conferences and then you'll be able to see the events that are available this summer, the options that are available in Manitou Springs, Colorado for two weeks and the options that are available in Lookout Mountain, Georgia for two weeks this summer. And and I appreciate what you said about financial support. You know, I mean, 
we look at our budget and see gas prices going up and eggs and milk and, you know, the basics. Mm -hmm. And it's costing so much more money these days to just maintain our lifestyle. And we think, well, should we cut back on vacation or, or, or whatever? There's certain things you don't ever want to cut back on. And one of them is investments that you make in your kids. And, and so, uh, a lot of people have come alongside and said, I don't have somebody to send, but I can give them a hundred bucks, 500. Some have said, I'm going to pay for one whole student to come. In fact, I just have an email right here. Somebody said, I've got two students that I want to have come. I'm paying for them to come. Uh, And now she said very wisely, she said, they're going to have to raise money for their own airfare. I think that's really smart. No, I love that. They've got some skin in the game. Yep. Yeah. They've got skin in the game. But uh, people who can come alongside and help, just hearing the description of the program, you realize this is part of your legacy potentially. Yeah. Now, grandparents, a lot of the students who come here are here because their parents said, we think this is really important for you. Yeah. A lot of them are here because grandma or grandpa said, this is really important for you. Yes. And we'll help you. We'll help you get there. So keep that in mind as well. All, but we're looking for 16 to 22 year olds for this summer. And you want you kind of want to move on this pretty soon. You know, yeah. Summit, obviously it's one of those programs that uh, it fills up fast because of the, uh, because of what we're talking about right now, but there are plenty of seats available all throughout the summer, both locations at this moment. I won't be able to say that by the time we hit March. Yes. So you want to be thinking and planning now. Absolutely. And for the homeschool parents there, they also have curriculums for you to implement within your homeschool as well. So while we won't cover that today, that is just an awesome uh, opportunity for parents. If you are looking for a robust apologetics program that is accessible to your teens, this is one available, summit.org. Jeff, thank you so much for joining me today. It has been so encouraging, refreshing, it's eye-opening, and I, I love that there, is, there are ministries out there who are coming alongside parents and families to help them raise up their kids because kids do need mentors outside of mom and dad. And when you can find one that has the same worldview as you, you they are worth their weight in gold. So thank you so much for mm-hmm. spreading a ministry mm-hmm. that is making a difference for the kingdom. Yeah. Well, thank you, Amy. I, I know it's tough. It's tough to be a parent right now. It's tough even when your kids grow up, yeah. uh, mine are out of the house now, but the, but the, and it's easy to be panicky. Mm-hmm. It's harder to persevere and to be purposeful, but those are, those are much more important. We need to take seriously the times that we live in. We need to seriously prepare our children for them, yeah. but we don't live in a panic because we serve a God who is sovereign overall. And no matter what happens, we tell our students this every summer, no matter what happens, you are living in a world in which Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Hero. And that Hero. changes everything. Changes everything. Thank you so much, Jeff. Mom and Papas, check out our show notes for links to Summit Ministry. Type it in your phone, get involved. And if your kid goes to Summit Ministries this summer, make sure you tag Mama Bear Apologetics on Instagram for amazing pictures of what your kiddo is doing for the faith. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, listeners. And we'll be back next time for another Mama Bear Apologetics podcast. Hey, everyone. Amy here. Summit Ministries has partnered with Mama Bear Apologetics, and they're offering a $100 discount for their summer 2023 student conferences. At Summit, teens will spend two full weeks immersed in God's Word while being trained by top philosophers and apologists to understand why they believe what they believe. To sign up a deserving teen in your life, just head over to summit.org, and upon checkout, type in the discount code ROAR23. That's R O A R. 23. And this will automatically be combined with their early bird discount for a total savings of $300. Act now because this early bird discount does end in March. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. 